Hey, what's up newbies? In this DxO Photo Lab tutorial, you're going to learn and master the tone curve. And that's it. So let's get started. To make this uh, tutorial a little bit easier, I'm going to move the histogram below the tone curve so we can better understand what the uh, tone curve is doing when we're manipulating it to the histogram or the uh, tonal range. If you don't know how to read or interpret the histogram, I do have a tutorial below. So make sure to check that out. And you can see this image here, it's washed out. There's several adjustments we can do to it, but I'm not gonna do it because I'm just gonna use the tone curve. So I'm gonna activate the tone curve here. And this tone curve, it has a linear line. Actually, all lines are linear. It's a linear curve, which has a ratio or a slope of one to one. And this represents the tonal range or the tonal values of the image. Right now, there's no adjustments to it, so that's why it is linear. In the background is the histogram, which is a compressed composite version, as opposed to the histogram here, which is a little bit stretched out, but it has the Luma channel, as well as the RGB channels and their complement colors. Now, this RGB tone curve, it's a composite tone curve representing the red, green, and blue channels, as well as luminance or luma. We'll work with the RGB composite channel to make things a little bit easier. The left-hand side of the tone curve is represented by the shadows, just like the histogram. The middle is the midtones, and the right-hand side is the highlights, exactly like the histogram. So, as I was saying, this image doesn't look that good or it's a little bit washed out. So what I can do is I can add some contrast to it. So remember this side is the shadows on the left hand side. So I can create a point on it by clicking on the tone curve here and then I can drag it down. So now I'm making the shadows darker. But while I'm making the shadows darker, it's also bringing down the midtones here a little bit as well as a little bit of the highlights. So I can compensate that by clicking on the highlights here and then increasing it right here. And there you go, we added some contrast. And if we look at the before and after, the image looks a lot better. And here's the before histogram, and here's the after histogram. So we darken the shadows and brighten the highlights. This is the classic S-curve, which a lot of pro photographers on their high horse are against when you're using the tone curve, but it works. So use it, don't be afraid to not use it even if other photographers complain about it. Another issue with this image or the whites here, we can look at the histogram here and here is that it's not fully or correctly exposed. There's a white balance that's missing. I shouldn't use the word white balance, but the whitest point is not white here. So what I can do is I can map this histogram and push it to the right. So I can click on this top right point right here, and then I can move it to the left which is going to map over the histogram. So you can see right here, it's a little bit more to the right. So now the image looks a little bit better exposed or exposed better. So what I can do now is to reset this tone curve, I can click on reset all and that resets the tone curve. If I click on this reset circle, it just resets the individual channel depending on which channel you're on. Now, there's also these numbers here. So what do these numbers represent? So it's between zero and 255. So it, this is a eight bit to color space. So it's two to the exponent eight, which is 256, but the value starts from zero. So it's zero to 255. So like it's eight bit here, eight bit here, and eight bit here in each individual color channel. We can also manually correct the tone curve by clicking on a point here and then playing with these numerical values right here. I can click right here, and then I can adjust it here or here like this, or I can do something like that. There's also these arrow sliders if I want to move it around. But usually just moving or playing around with the actual curve is a little bit better. So I will just reset that all. Now there's also the presets here. We have light contrast, medium contrast, if you guys want to check that out, you can, but usually I don't use a preset. So let me make sure I just reset this. And then we have the tone picker. So if I click on this tone picker here, I can click on the highlights here and I can make it brighter by bringing this slider up or the picker up. And then I can make the shadows right here and I can make it darker. 
You can see I accidentally put two points or clicked on the picker twice here in the shadows area. So one way to reset or remove this point is I can just double click it and it removes that point. I can also click on the point, hold it and drag it out to remove that point. So let me try this tone picker again, click on the shadows and then darken it right here. And here he goes. And here's another way to add contrast. I can also move around this point if I want. I'm just going to reset it again. And what I, another thing I can do is I can darken the midtones or I can brighten it. So I'll reset this. Now, one of the hardest things to understand is the gamma. The gamma, it controls the contrast between the light and dark pixels. It's also known as the contrast factor. One of the issues is like all these tone curves, they always start linear, but maybe it shouldn't be linear because it's not mapped correctly. And this image is washed out. So to correct that, we use gamma. So we can correct it this way, which is wrong. We need to actually move it to the left and correct the mid-tone contrast. So if anything, just remember that gamma, it controls the mid-tone contrast or maps the mid-tones a little bit better. And just to demonstrate this, if I move this all the way to the left, you can see it's more impacting the shadows because there's a little bit of gap on the highlights. And if I move it all the way to the right, you can see this gap here. It doesn't impact the mid-tones uniformly. So let me just reset this by double clicking on it. So now we'll go to the individual channels. I'll start with the Luma or Luminance channel. So what the Luminance channel does is it impacts the shadows and highlights without, without impacting the color or the saturation. So to better demonstrate that, I'm going to just reset this Luma channel. I'm going to go to this image here, right click, create a virtual copy, and then I'm going to set this as the reference image, and then I'm going to compare it. So I'm going to go and adjust this image's contrast by going to the RGB channel right here. And I'm going to decrease the shadows, increase the highlights, and I'm going to overdo it so I can make sure you guys can see the saturation in the sky, which is blue here. Now I'm going to go to this image here, which is the copy. I'm going to go to the Luma and try to create the same S curve except on the Luma or Luminance channel. So you can see here, this added contrast it increases the shadows and highlights, but it didn't impact the saturation. So this impacted Luma only, this impacted Luma and Chroma, which is RGB or color. So hopefully now you guys understand how the tone curve works. I highly recommend you practice and play around with it majority of the time when you're playing or using a tone curve it's going to be very subtle adjustments and you're only going to put a few points maybe you want to make it look cool and you want to put the s curve of death by adding many points like this like this like this like this and like this and then map it and then map the shadows like this or like this so you can do that but most of the time you're only going to be using like one to three points on the tone curve. Now let's do some practical examples with this tone curve. So I'll go to this image here. Let me get out of this view. This image I took in uh, Patagonia. Same, with, same thing with this one. I took this in Patagonia on the Argentinian side. So with this image, there's a little bit of noise. It's blurry. We should be using other tools to adjust it or edit it but I just want to make some simple edits with the tone curve. Looking at this histogram here and here, you can see it's lacking a lot of the highlights or the whites, so it's not evenly exposed, which is fine. Most of the time, or half the time, you don't need images to be exposed evenly, especially when you're doing astrophotography or HDR photography. But in this case, we'll try to correct the exposure using the uh, tone curve. So I'll just go to Luma here, and then I'll start mapping this over. And you can see the whites are becoming whiter like that. So that looks good. And now what I can do is just add a little bit of contrast, which will also impact the saturation a little bit. And let's say I want to add a little bit of magenta to this image. 
I can pull down the green channel here and just add a little bit of magenta. And already this image looks pretty cool just with a few adjustments to the tone curve. And with the green channel, I just decreased or darkened the midtones by putting in more magenta. So let's see the before and after, before and after. And of course, as I said earlier, you want to add some noise reduction and some sharpening, remove some of the blur, but just with this tone curve, it looks pretty good. Now going to this image here of Patagonia again, what I can do, let's see, this has a lot of yellowish orange. I can give it like a purple or magenta color. So remember how I added magenta to the previous image by decreasing the midtones here and putting in more magenta because the opposite of green or the complement of green is magenta. The complement of red is cyan and the complement of blue is yellow. The blue and green is similar to the white balance and the tint. So let me just reset this and I want to show you an example of manipulating colors with a tone curve. So I can add a lot of magenta to this by decreasing the green channel like this. This is overdone, of course, but I'm trying to demonstrate how you can mix the colors. But another way of doing this is by combining red like this, because red, blue, is also magenta. But the green magenta looks different than the combination of the red and blue magenta because this image is not mapped the same or identical along each channel. They're all different, right? See the histogram of the blue channel, the histogram of the green channel, and the histogram of the red channel. They're all different, right? And to give you a better example, I can go to this chart right here. Let me reset this. I'm going to go to the green channel and I'm gonna put magenta all in the shadows like this or actually all in the highlights. So you can see all the highlights have turned magenta here. Here's the before or after. And this bottom right quadrant, it's the highlights, right? But what I can do is I can go and do the same thing or almost the same thing, but this time on the shadows and add magenta by increasing it like this and increasing the blue like this. And now the magenta is mapped to the shadows. Hopefully you guys understand or see what's happening. If you don't understand, make sure to leave a comment below and I'll try to answer it. So let me just uh, reset this and go back to this image and we can start playing with these colors a little bit more. So let's say with the red, I want to add a little bit red to the shadows like this. I can do that, but I don't want to add it to the sky. So I'll move down the red right here. And for the sky, what do I want to do? I'll, I'll add some, I'll make it blue. Yeah, so I'll put some blue into it like this. But I don't want to impact the shadows, so I'll bring down the midtones like this. Bring this blue a little bit more like that. And there you go. So I put a little bit more blue in the sky and a little bit more red in these shadows here. Let's see the before and after. Before and after so that looks pretty cool and we didn't even touch any noise reduction or sharpening or all that or anything like that so looks pretty good here's another example of this horse that i took in iceland i photographed it in iceland obviously we can make other corrections like remove some of the blemishes crop this guy out or whatnot but let's see what we can do with the tone curve let's try to make this image pop with the tone curve so i'll add the classic s curve that many photographers think they're above, but it'll work here. I'll go to the, let's say the highlights. I want to put, let's say red and blue. I'll put a little bit of magenta in the highlights. Put a little bit of magenta in the highlights. That looks good. What about in the shadows? What do I want to add in the shadows? Maybe I'll make it cooler. So I'll put some, actually to get blue, I need to add red and green, right? Red and green to the shadows. Does that get blue? 
Let's take a look here. So let's see here. So here's the before and after. Here's the before and after. So actually what I'm gonna do with the blue is I can actually just map it like this. And that looks a little bit better. So red plus green does equal blue. No, it actually equals yellow. So that's the problem. So I need to go this backwards. I need to go like this. Now you can see the blue. So it's very easy to mess up the complement colors when you're doing combinations. And I'm gonna double click on this blue channel here on the shadow to move that. And now that looks a lot better. So let me just correct this. So I'm adding actually cyan and magenta to the shadows to make the horse a little bit more blue. Now let's see here. And let's take a look at the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. So just with a few adjustments with the tone curve, we added like a moody purplish look to it. What do you guys think? Do you guys like it? And hopefully now you totally understand and have mastered the tone curve. Make sure to practice. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.